Alrighty, so here we go. Let's get back to it. Uh, Rook and Alette entering battle against a, a lone dredge. I'm sure it will be fine. I'm <laughs> not going to click the unit's portrait to know about his abilities. I can't mark anybody. We're done. Oh, dead deer. You know, I, I actually have never really been too fond of Rook's ability. I know Nathan loves it. I don't. Um, I, I don't find it useful nope. enough, generally. Way better just to deal damage or knock down their armor. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And Rook deals so much damage on his own yep. that it's like, don't well... <laughs> yep, I, I understand that Nathan loves it, but... Uh, I love it as a concept. I just yeah. don't think it was executed well. I, I think the benefit isn't enough. I think that damage is too effective in this game. Is what yes, is. yes. No, but well, that's exactly what it is. And I mean, the theory, right, is that you're going to get more damage out of it because, you know, your other party members are dealing additional hits. But ultimately, Rook is so powerful on his own. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, that theory is not necessarily true, that you're going to be uh, gaining... Uh, I can't kill him. Eh, uh, you're still close enough. Yeah. He's only dealing one damage at this point. Or two if he's attacking my armor for no reason. Prepare to die, bitch! Yeah. Got him! Right in the back of the face. I, I think that ability would have been more useful on a support-based character, or a defense-based character. Or on any of the other archers, because frankly, none of them are good. Rook is the only yeah. one that's good, and he's only good because his stats are overwhelming. I, I do like the, the white-haired lady, actually. Because you can. she has very good armor break output. That's valid. That actually if, is If true. you use her exclusively for that, she's actually really cool. Yeah, and that's kind of what I did use her for. Actually, it. and her ability, where she shoots an arrow into the air, that yeah. is so useful because you can stagger opponent's movement. If you know the path they're going to take, yeah. you can make them stop every single square or tile forward. <laughs> and you're just like, I'm going to keep shooting you because you're moving slow as hell. Uh, now, there's there's a question about the supplies. Uh, are we forgetting the supplies and going back to Skoger, or are we hurrying to gather them, or are we just trying to kill more dredge? I think we're just going to gather them, right? We're going with the pragmatic approach, right? Yeah, killing more dredge is pointless right now. Yes, it is. Uh, let's try and gather some supplies so that maybe we don't die in the first, like, day of being out on the road. Right? Yeah. Ah, there we go, 15 supplies. The more people are in the caravan, the faster supplies diminish. Most towns will have them. That is a damn dirty lie. Most towns will have, like, <laughs> oh, four supplies. And you're like, I have 400 people. That's going to feed me for all of an hour. And they're like, ah, yeah, <laughs> tough call. Tough. Can we come with you by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, it's this little tiny cart. And you can't even see the people on it. It's just like, oh, we don't have any varl yet. <laughs> Ooh. Wait, maybe we do. Maybe we do have a varl. Is this our Varl? <laughs> if we had a Varl, that would be rather strange. I mean, we're going to meet... Um, our Varl. What's his name? I Ivan? Ivor. 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 the dredge with my own oh, eyes. More voiceover. What happened in the north? Good question. Already we see more between the trees as we approach our home. Uh -oh. And Alette grips my hand tight. We must find Ivor. So that's Rook's voice? I guess so. I, I was just thinking that too. I didn't yeah. realize the voiceover changed. Um, but I didn't. I didn't think it was ever first person. But he said, "My." Oh. He said, "Alette grips my hand." So that's that's a Rook's voice. That's really weird. I mean, I don't think it's out of context for this game. No, no, I don't. I don't think so either. It basically becomes Rook's story. Oh, it's so freaking beautiful. Oh, Fun awesome. fact: this this game inspired a uh, Burning Wheel campaign, which is a role playing game that we play, <laughs> yeah. and uh, we're working on making a graphic novel out of it. I think working is a bit of a stretch. Uh, we are we are conceptualizing a graphic novel to work on. It's uh, it's a long term project. Uh, go with Eagle, Alette. You are you you're just gonna you're gonna stay, and we're gonna hold off the dredge, and then there's more shouting, and now oh, I think we're getting attacked again. Are we getting attacked again? Houses. I mean, it go. sounds like attack in the background, and now we see dredge off to the uh, in oh, the yeah, foreground. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. I thought that was one of the smartest things that they did with the, the art in this game, is that they would put those little, like, contextual art pieces. The little bits of clues. Yeah. yeah. Uh, turn order, yes. Okay, I want Ivor to go before Rook. We're ready. Ivor's so great. Oh, he's fantastic. Okay, looks like four dredge shouldn't be much of a problem as long as I can keep him protected. The one with the shield looks like trouble. 
Really? <laughs> Not for long. Well, let's cripple that guy so he can't hurt me. And then... Yeah, the big guys always take a long time to move, too, so we kind of have our opportunity to just slam these guys down. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I could just... I would just... Actually, I would attack the... Can you hit the other guy to the right with the arrow? This guy? Nah, I'm one away, unfortunately. <sighs> I planned that wrong. Oh, well. I'll just hit him. And then next turn, I'll kill him, and then I'll move on somebody else with this guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ivor, you move on this guy, because you can deal four damage to him. Ah, there you go. Which is exactly half his health, just like it was to this guy. So I just cripple both of them, and then just sit there and take their attacks. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to kill you. Actually, you... Uh, oh, I didn't well, need to do that. Yeah. Fuck, because his health was lower. His, no, because his, his armor his went armor down. His armor was lower. Actually, I didn't even think about that. So yeah. it sort of worked out better than I expected it to. Yeah. Shit. Is that that's not an ability that all Varl have, right? Where when they're dealt armor damage, they it bounces back. No, that's only I think it's only Dredge. Um, oh, Dredge lose armor when. Really? No, I yeah. think I think it's when they're hitting Varl specifically. It might be because they've got like that ancestral hatred thing going on. Um, I don't really know. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use this because his exertion is one, and he needs one, and I want to take three more armor off this guy. That's it. When you deal three or more armor damage to a, to a, a, a dredge, it deals one armor damage to adjacent dredge. Well, that's that's a separate mechanic. Yeah, that's, that's just a, that's just the dredge explode sometimes mm -hmm. mechanic. <laughs> that's, well, that mechanic becomes, I think, extremely important for tactical decisions. In, in... Especially when you start running into those fucking slingers. Yeah. God, I hate those guys. I mean, it gets to the point, right, where there's like, what, at least six or seven dredge on the battlefield, maybe more, oh. and half of them are the giant shield-bearing ones. Oh, big time. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and... This is actually that situation we were talking about where maybe the pillage system works for the player. It's just like I've gotten him... Oh, all right. I will... Get... Oh, Ivor's down? Yeah, Ivor went down. He sat there and took the, the hits from these two guys for like a half an hour, so it, it, it was fine. Yeah. And this guy's not going to be trouble for me, so I'm just going to No, go especially since we can already deal four damage to him. And then I'm just going to go ahead and deal five, because that's exactly half. And if he loses one armor from this... No, he won't lose any armor. Maybe just when they attack. Yeah, it's it's only when they do, I think, armor damage on a Varl. Gotcha. So it's it's pretty specific. Yeah. But either way, we're fine. Isn't Rook the only character in the game that's got a melee weapon and or a, like a bow? Yes. Yeah. He's also the only male archer. Well, that's... Yeah, that's the other thing that makes Rook just exceptional. Yeah. That's why I think it's the most important to just, like, rack up his power or yeah. his health. I could have taken Eagle and Alette with me there, um, but uh, I didn't want to. Oh, really? Yeah, I had the option. I sent him away. Because if you keep him out of the fight, then he has a greater chance of living. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, fair. Let's see. Rook, I'm doing one more check of the houses. See if you can find anyone. Um, is that the pragmatic approach? Uh, skip the houses would be... Not pragmatic, because we're not... Looking for survivors. Fuck. Find anyone? A yeah. few sent them inside. This At least right time. now, because we need people. Yes, early in the game. Yeah. But when we have people, if if we have the option of losing them, then yeah. they're probably not worth it. <laughs> if we don't have people, then they can't be expendable. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We need to get our tools first. So this is actually kind of funny. Uh, when I first started playing this game, I assumed that injured three days meant that I couldn't like use them in combat. That's what I thought at first, yeah, too. So the first time I played through the game, I would enter fights like this, because I was like, oh, well, my other guy's injured, so I don't really have a choice. Oh, you actually removed them? Yeah, and so I would fight like that all the time. It oh, makes geez. you really, really efficient. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, this is Alette's thing. I'm going to give it to him, and then Rook. I'm going to go ahead and promote. Oh, yes. Because I can... And I will add to his exertion, because that is just the best thing to do with people. I, I, it's too late now. I was, I was going to see if we could promote Ivor. Uh, I don't think we can. I don't. Did he kill two people? No, he didn't. He only killed one. Uh. That's why. Um, yeah, there were there were four dredge in that one, and Rook killed uh, all but one. I guess that's the <laughs> other thing about the combat system that I always found a little weird logically, is that the ones that do have the killing blow are the ones that get the... Yes. The count. Yeah. Um, which is a little silly, all things considered. Mm -hmm. um, but as a systems designer, I don't know how they would have better done it other than that, you know? Yeah. 
other than I guess whoever dealt the most amount of damage, but then it's a little counterintuitive. Because then it's just about damage. This way it's just about killing, but I don't know, I, I feel like sometimes that's not the best way to do it. It makes it hard for your lower level characters to catch up at the end of the game. Yes and no. If you know how to set it up so that they have basically no health and that the, the weaker characters get that killing blow, then it's not so bad. Okay, here we go. We're running. I'm trying to do the pragmatic thing. I'm sorry for skipping through very quickly, people. It's just uh, efficiency, you know? It's a long <laughs> game. It's like, it takes about probably like four or five hours to play through a campaign, and we're just going to, wow, that's a lot of people. All right, so... We should at least make bottom. sure that we're going through the, the text for more important parts. Yeah, it's valid. All right, I love Eagle. He's great. Alette, you're, you're just... You're, you're probably going to have to sit this one out. <laughs> I just, I don't think she's very good. I know some people like her, I don't know. Well, yeah, she's, I mean, mechanically speaking, she's designed to not be the most useful character. I think her ability is the only thing that really makes her useful, but yep. that takes a lot of uh, Set up. S battlefield manipulation. Yes. I'm going to move him over here, but I'm not going to do anything with him. Ugh, so big. So big. Ugh, too big. And that's, that's how they, they pretty much always make combat difficult is they try to introduce characters in opposite sides of the battlefield mm. so suddenly you can't turtle up um, which is pretty smart I think because having made a couple of tactical games in the past turtling up is usually the toughest thing to design around you mean uh, it, the toughest thing to prevent players from doing? Yes. Yes. And it, the, what's funny about that is that in every game that makes it hard for me to turtle I just get annoyed because I love well, right, and that's because it's generally the easy way out of most tactical situations. I disagree. It's usually the hard way, because you lose a lot of things. Uh, I, I don't know. In, in a game like this, I think you would actually lose less. Yeah. Because you have a lot more time to cut them down, and yeah. you have your, your um, bigger guys basically always taking the damage first. Valid. So that the weaker ones, like Alert doesn't get don't get one-shotted i think the trouble with it is that in this game the bigger guys who just keep taking hits like in in most games like oh this guy has lots of health he should be fine it doesn't quite work like that because if he has lots of health he also deals lots of damage until he all of a sudden has no health and then he's dealing no damage that's true it's really bad getting your big melee guys crippled early but at the same time if you have archers they can shoot through your your friendly characters sure. right yeah they can so, shoot over you yeah. so if you use your archers right then it can balance out um and you never lose shield break ability the shield like break quality quality yeah that's yeah, good for okay, i'm just gonna have one shot this guy got him <sighs> I tried to pick the next guy who would go, who was in that little, like, adjacency zone. Uh, do I still have two willpower? I only have one exertion, though. Kinda sucks. Oh. Yeah. I'll leave one for a let, that way she can probably rank up. Uh, that's fair. If you cut out the next guy in the line, though, a different dredge goes, right? Uh, it does, yes, but it still makes me feel better. That's fair. What I usually try to do is I'll, I'll damage the next one in the line, so long as I won't kill him. Ah, yes. That way, it's the weak one that moves, and then you yeah. have the chance of doing the same thing. You cripple him down, yeah. It's all about maintaining, like, or rather trying to get the take the least amount of damage overall. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Which is very strange for a tactical game, because I feel like most tactical games, uh. you generally want to completely eliminate a character. Yes, because most of the time health doesn't equal strength. Right, exactly. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stick him here, and then I'm going to make him stonewall, so that way hopefully the enemy will attack him. He is the closest. I wish stonewall had some sort of, like, aggro effect. Yeah, that would be nice, but it doesn't. Yeah. Hide behind your daughter, Rook. Hide behind <laughs> her. Stay healthy. You gotta stay protected. You can at least rely on Rook being one of those characters that even if he falls in battle, no, he he'll would, never. He went after the archer. Yeah, she's down. She's down. All right. Uh, if Rook falls in battle, you can what now? You can always rely on him not being one of the characters that permanently dies. Yes. Um, which I guess, as you find out later on, most characters don't actually die from battle scenarios. They usually die from story points. Mm -hmm. Correct. But when you're first starting this game, you have no idea, and you're just like, oh my god, anyone could die at any moment. Permadeath could be anywhere. 
All right, I, this time, because I'm, I happen to be standing adjacent to an enemy, one of the reasons why I don't like Rook's ability is because... Oh, wait. Oh, uh, yeah, you could just... Uh, one of the reasons why I don't like Rook's ability is that it relies on the archer being placed next to someone. Even then, it seems like it barely did anything. It didn't actually do anything. It just it it, opened it took up down... a possibility for... It, did it? it? It took one armor and, and one health damage. That was it. It's garbage. He, a garbage he deflected ability. another attack, which kind of makes sense. Nathan's wrong about this one. I, I think it could be used if it's used really well, but that seemed like the perfect setup for it, and it still mm. was basically less useful than had Rook just attacked. Yes. Yes, indeed it was. I have just one exertion, so I will use one at a time. <laughs> oh, but uh, so close. Uh, all right, well, I'll leave one for a let. <laughs> <laughs> By the end of this there campaign, a let's just going to be a monster. Doink! Got him right in the eye. Just like a pile of dead dredge. <laughs> I didn't lose anybody. I just like surrounded him. That's it's kind of beautiful. I did lose somebody, that's right. There's there's a dead there's a dead human woman under that pile of, of dead <laughs> dredge. Jesus. Just dig her out. In the chaos that follows, some of the town guards struggle desperately with the dredge and what might be the chieftain amongst them. To your left, Ivor is laying into a large colossus. If nobody steps in, they could be picked off one by one. Uh, I will help the fighters, obviously. We will? Well, I guess we need fighters. I don't need the townspeople. That's true. I don't need them. Is that they... what the other option was? Yeah. Oh, it's like yeah. help the townspeople or townspeople help Townspeople are help worthless. Ivor. Yeah, they're not helpful. I don't need them. Okay, well, we're going to take care of this battle in the next episode. We'll see you in the archives. It's only three? Oh, but these guys can call more, and they're really big and tough. Yeah, so it can be interesting quick if you don't take them out.